So it's been five months since I set up this tank. And if you remember, we've got some Dwarf Gourd Army, some Lamp Eyes, and then some Neon Tetris, not Neon Tetris, the orange Neon Tetris. And looking at the older photos, you can see that we've got amazing plant growth. It looks sort of like a, like a swamp here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna trim some of this back, try and save some of the plants and open it up so we can get more lights. Sadly, one of the Dwarf God Army died. I don't know how, it just went fat and then it just went blah, 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 and then I found it on the floor. That is now plant food. And then some of the Tetras and Lamp Eyes also died as well. So there's only a few of them, but we're going to restock this tank with those three species. But there are like literally tens and tens of snails. Maybe I've overfed the the fish, but we've got a huge colony of snails, which I appreciate. And there's actually three different types of snails. And over the course of this video, if I find them, I will show you the three different types. If you remember as well, one of the features was to have some of this plant come over and take advantage of the permanent water source, which has kind of worked. And then we've got some growth here, which I'm gonna hang over up there at some point. This has started to flower, which has been really nice. In fact, they've not really given me any trouble. They've actually got better here than, than in the very first tanks that I had, probably because of all the nitrates that are just sitting at the bottom. And this is due a clean as well. I need to suck up all this fish poop down here. <laughs> With that first piece out, we haven't really disturbed the waterbed too much, hopefully, and then the filter will take care of the rest of it. Right, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take it from this side and this side and open it up in the middle a little bit. such a change. I'll let the sediment drop and then I will start sucking up some of the poop that's been left behind. See them all the lamp eyes? Two of the species of snails that I have, one it's these little red nerites, I think they're called red nerites, and then I've got these seemingly normal snails over here, but they came from a snail that is basically like big and black and yet none of the babies have actually turned into that. So I don't know what's going on there. So this is the kind of snail I'm talking about here. One of these is in that other tank and it's produced all these babies and yet none of the babies look like itself. I don't understand. Hello. If there are any uh, fish experts, can someone explain to me what's going on with this snail here? Why are all these little white spots growing? on its back. And the Gurami, as always, are always interested in what I'm doing. They don't really show any fear to me. Whereas the Labios, at the moment they're hiding because I've had to take out some of the plants, hence the open space. But that's where we're gonna put the hole from this tank. Otherwise, this tank was set up a couple of weeks or a month prior to this one. So this was my first attempt. Come, actually, come November, I'm going to get a different tank and I'm going to replant it and re-landscape it entirely and get rid of this because I actually don't like tanks that are too, too tall. I want it longer. And this table can accommodate 100 centimeters, whereas this current tank is only 80 centimeters. One of the good army have died. It got sick where I think it just ate too much and I had to put it out of its misery. And that's the only death apart from the plants Hence this huge open space here. One thing I have noticed between the two tanks is that this one, the plant life here grows much slower. And I don't know if it's because of the, the lighting setup is different, but if you remember this one is like a hundred US dollars, give or take. This is a Chiros lighting system. So the colors look better than a normal LED that you would get from a normal cheap LED. And these LEDs don't hurt my eyes, which 
makes it like a, a mark of quality for me because those LEDs do and the ones in this living room do. Plant growth seems to get better in there than it does in here. Now you could say, well, maybe it's because they're different plants. True, but the plants I've harvested today, I've put some at the back over here. Uh, they don't really seem to be growing that quickly. I mean, they are growing, but not to the degree as they are over there. Look at the labios. Can you see that orange mass inside here? For some reason, the labios are scared today. Don't know why. Yeah, I'll give you a close up. They all just want to congregate behind here. What we're going to do is plant all along the side here to cover this up. I would plant in the center, but because this was my first tank, you can see that the soil isn't really that high and I've got soil bags in the middle. So the plants will not obviously take root when I push them down, sadly. So this is a sort of compromise where I'm gonna put them there. I'm being quick with my fingers, and I, I know I shouldn't, but I want to uh, simply because it's just so difficult to get the, uh, if I use my implements, if I use one of these, it isn't gonna stick down. So I have to use my hands and get my arm all wet. Bit of bad timing with the lighting there because the auto turn off the sunset function was uh, coming on as I was doing the last of the plant. So I've just quickly turned it back on, freaked them back out. But basically, uh, I've planted a few at the front and I want to see if they will grow, at least at least over here anyway. I planted a few at the back, I'll show you in a minute, and then the majority of them that I managed to save from over there by the side, as I said. Now, do you remember in the other video, link in description, all that jazz, do you remember I wanted some things growing out of the tank because I didn't want it to be a pure rectile, rectangle? What has happened is that the piece lily survived, but it swapped over to this side. And this plant must have heard my intentions from the last video and has grown out of the tank to come out over here. Produced some nice little flowers that quickly died as they always do. That's a shame. And then one of the plants that I put in the tank the stems basically all snapped off and it all died. And I only found out today, but the little black disc with the starter soil inside was completely barren. But the rest of it has hung on and decided to grow and root around the, uh, the, the chichiro. So I've kept it there. And as you can see, right at the back, I've planted a few in the gravel. We'll see how they do. I've just come back from the fish shop and I've got some new basically i got a resupply of fish and to fill up the empty space in the middle here i've bought some new plants which i can just plant them down it's only temporary and the other one is to cover up the damage that i did to this to the bottom of the floor here so i'm going to put this down hopefully it will just fit in there perfect look at that some of these larger snails have a habit of ripping up the plants. There's one there burying itself. They have a habit that I kind of want to adapt to. So by putting this little bed down, hopefully they'll leave these ones alone. They don't go to the back where the gravel is, but they'll certainly dig around over here. So it's also just a bit of an extra precaution. And in this tank, we've got some new shoaling fish. We've got some tetras and some lamp eyes which would be nice. But in this bag, we've got some flame red gourami and one more dwarf gourami. They're all peaceful and they're all gonna give my other guy here a little bit of company. Now, the usual shop I go to, I trust her and I see very few incidences of fin rot. Um, basically the fish are all in good condition 
And I know her temperature, it's about 27 degrees, 26 degrees. Looking at this, my tank is 25. I'm gonna test this water in a couple of minutes and then probably just let them go. I usually don't have any, have any problems. There's one of the new ones here. Seems to be okay. And the other one's gone to the back. So what I'll do is I'll feed these. And then it'll be lights out. But you can see them, they're just checking out the parameters of the tank. Okay, we're going to release the smaller fish first, the lamp eyes and the orange tetras. We're gonna see how quickly they, they shoal together. Reminds me of philosophy football, you think there's going to be some action and Karl Marx is uh, brought on as a substitution and then as it begins to play, nothing happens. <laughs> okay, it's time for the bigger fish and hopefully we'll get something more out of them. Now what I've done is I've deliberately got myself a dwarf gourami there and then four red flame gouramis. They're mostly peaceful, and I hope that the existing Dwarf Gurami will just take to his new friend. So let's see. Checking him out already. They seem welcoming. Oh. Get off that roof, that's my fault. <laughs> Alright, hang on, they're fighting. <laughs> Don't fight guys. There's room for everyone. Just swim away. Oh. I didn't realize how much bigger my one is compared to this one. It's day two and I'm happy to report that this tank hasn't had any fatalities, no fish died during the night and basically the good armies especially are all getting along with one another but there are a few little things that I kind of predicted and I did take over last night and I noticed this morning that they, not they, they when I mean they I mean the snails try to take out some of the plants, I'll show you. So I've got these three types of ice cream cone snails. There's one here, there's one here, and there's one here. And you can see they've kind of buried themselves in amongst the mush left over. And that's where the plants are. So I found one of them, the new plants, found one of them almost hanging by a root and I've had to push it in even deeper. Luckily, these two, for example, are folded underneath the soil bag that I've got. So I don't think they're gonna come out. Otherwise, these ones are fine. And so, good. That's one of the new good armies. And then we have this one here. In the bathroom tank, things are a lot more energetic now. Now that I've opened up the main center area here, you can see more of the fish, but especially by adding bigger fish, it allows the two shoals of Tetra and Lampeyes to move around a little bit more because obviously they're concerned for their lives. But all these fish are typically very peaceful. So this is my resident dwarf good army, mostly blue with red stripes. And the new addition is at the back. Find him in a minute. There he is. And he's mostly red with blue stripes. And he seems to be happy and cheerful. He's lost a couple of his uh, feelers. They're a bit short. But importantly, he is not attacking him anymore. They're kind of like, they're hanging out, they're chill. And the red flame good armies are still trying to figure out a way of getting out of this tank, but it'll take them a few days and they'll settle down. Whereas the white one and the other one seems to just be two that are trying to escape. 
Uh, the other two are fine. So uh, no deaths among the Tetras. I know they're a little bit more fragile, but they're all there, swimming away. Overall, it's been a nice little tweak to this tank, especially when the red ones, these red flames, pop out against the, uh, the green. It's been a month and I just want to give you another update before we do the big aquarium tank change in November. But the plants that I put in, if you remember at the side, look at them, look at the state of them. They've been ruined by the snails. You can see one of the culprits here. Look at him, burrowed in deep. Seems my plan to tuck them under the bags didn't work. However, on the right side of the tank, they've survived. It seems that for some reason the snails don't come on this side. So they, they're okay. And we've even got some new roots for one that I planted earlier last year. I couldn't help myself either. I got some new additions to the tank. I got this plant here with the wood. It cost me about 10 US dollars, the snails. And the, uh, the tank cleaners seem to like it. And then in the corner, I bought Remember, I put it in the center here. I've wedged it into the side. And I got myself a lily pad. And for the second tank, I've opened it up a little bit more. Maybe it's not obvious, but I've started trimming more of the plants because this just grows so quickly. And I got myself a breeder box because now and again, I do see a tetra for a few days and then they get eaten, which is not something that I want to do if I can get my own free fish. So the next time I see one, I'll pop it in there. And I still have all the gourami. No deaths again after a month. I'm doing okay, I think. I've just got to clean it a little bit more. Some good news, the new dwarf gourami has regrown its feelers. If you see it in the previous part of the video, one of them was really short and uh, now they're both at the normal length that they should be. As you know, I don't do a lot of fish videos. I plan to do two or three a year. And I've already mentioned multiple times, the next ones are in November when I get my new aquariums so that I can do the changes. And that will involve carrying a lot of these plants into the new tank. But I'll do a step-by-step, -step, uh, not guide, because I'm not an expert in any of this. But if you're curious to see how it's done uh, or how I think it should be done, then obviously you're welcome to watch it. Um, so I'll see you all in November for the fish videos. Otherwise, it's going to be a regular dose of Star Trek, pop culture, Hong Kong. Until then, thank you for watching.